Good morning. Welcome to Quilting with Lori. My name is Lori Dickman, and today we are going to get back to our kimono jacket, which we have been working on for probably the last month or so. Hopefully you've got all your blocks ready and you've created your fabric so we can continue. I have linked below a couple of videos that you'll want to watch if you haven't seen part one and part two. Part one was where we rust dyed some muslin fabric, which we're going to use with some other beautiful fall fabrics here to create our kimono jacket. Uh, the video number two is the video which shares with you how to make these disappearing blocks. There's so many different types of disappearing blocks that you can use. Um, I'm offering you one in video number two and that link is below in the description box as well. Actually, in that video number two, I believe I did offer you a couple of different options to create a disappearing block. They're really fun blocks to make, and if you Google disappearing blocks, you will find just dozens of different types of disappearing blocks that you can create to make your fabric. So step number one of this kimono jacket was obviously to create our fabric, which I have done. I have sections of my fabric all put together. Um, but before we get to that, I want to share with you what I've done on my pattern. And the pattern itself can be downloaded from the happiestcamper.com. And I will again link her um, tutorial down below. It's a wonderful site. If you haven't checked out her website, it's really a lot of fun. And she does have a free, down free downloadable kimono jacket pattern there if you'd like to use that. Or maybe you have your own jacket pattern that you would like to use. Well, for the patterns here, I've actually made some changes to the pattern because I am rather short. So I needed to get rid of some of the length of the jacket or I would just swim in it. And I also got rid of some of the length on the arms. So what I did is once I um, printed out the jacket pattern and taped it together, there are guidelines to follow. Then I took each of the arms and I folded it in so that it was reducing the length by two and a half inches. So that is the arm that I did reduce in length. And then I also folded it up four inches so that it reduced the length four inches. So it's gonna be a shorter kimono jacket. And I'll bring over the other kimono jacket that's the illustration that we found uh, that we're using to uh, create this. So here is a kimono jacket that I had made many, many years ago. I don't even know how many years ago I made it. I did use a rust dyeing muslin in here and some um, burgundies and golds, and I used a blue jean type, a soft blue jean type fabric as well on this jacket. But you'll notice it's much shorter, and it just, that style of jacket just works better for me, so that's why I shortened the pattern here that I'm following. You don't have to do that, I'm just doing that so that um, I'm making a shorter kimono jacket. And mine won't have the um, facing here, it's just going to be regular, but I am going to put some facing down here, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Okay, so here are the fabrics that I used. I obviously created a lot of muslin um, using the rust dyeing technique. Don't forget to check out that video. It's really fun to do that. I, I really enjoyed that and hope, hopefully you did as well. Then I took my fabrics with my rust dyed fabric and I created my disappearing block. You can create any type of disappearing block that you choose to. And then um, here we have my fabrics right here. And I'm going to use flannel uh, for my um, batting, if you will. I'm just simply going to use a white flannel. Make sure, if you do use flannel, um, to wash and dry it so that it's all pre-shrunk before you actually quilt it into your fabric. When I quilt my fabric, I'm just going to quilt the fabric that I've created along with the flannel, and then the dark fabric is going to be used as my facing, but that will be cut out separately, and I'll face the jacket, and we'll show you how that's done as well. So here, let me move this aside, and I'll first show you... Um, this is two sections that I've created for the front. So I've got two different fronts and I have two flannels. So when I take this to the long arm, I'll put the, each of these fronts on individually with that uh, back flannel to quilt it. And you'll notice I've added a piece of fabric down here and that's the fabric that's going to go around the waist. So I'm going to uh, make sure that I quilt it. I'll probably quilt this in straight lines. I haven't made up my mind how I'm going to quilt this yet. I will decide that once I get it up on the quilting machine. We'll find out at that time. 
And then the other piece that I have here, I have folded this flannel on a fold because the back of your jacket obviously has to be cut on the fold. So this is the center back of the jacket. These are the folds and you're going to uh, lay out your pattern on there when we get to that point. We're first going to quilt this. So I will take this to my long arm, put the flannel with this fabric up on there and I will quilt it. And again, if you can see this, here is the bottom of that jacket and it's going to have a gold piece right there. And I simply just sewed it on the bottom and then I'll, I'll fussy cut the pattern on this um, when I get it to that point. So you've seen a few photos where I was quilting um, the pieces on my long arm and I've just saved this last front section and I am quilting it on my domestic machine. So you can use either machine uh, depending on what you have available to do your quilting. And what I'm doing is simply outlining each square and then I am creating squares on the inside of each of these very simple quilting, straight line quilting. And then I'm going to do straight lines al along the bottom as well. Nothing fancy. Um, it's such a busy fabric that you really don't have to do a whole lot uh, with regard to fancy quilting on the jacket fabric. All right, so I have the fabric pieces all quilted and ready to go now. Um, here is one of my front fabric sections and the front pattern section. What I'm going to do is line up this four inch section here, the seam lines of this four, four inch section on the seam line of this uh, piece of fabric that I added so that it will be perfectly straight. So I will pin this down here and I will cut out this one piece at this point and this will be the Actually, it'll end up being the left section of uh, the left front section. And then for the um, right front section, I am going to have to flip the fabric over on the other piece, or flip the pattern over, excuse me, and line up this um, five inch piece of fabric down here with that line again to ensure that it lines up straight. And I'll pin it down and cut it out. Let me get that done and I'll show you. Okay, I'll move it around here so you can see. I have it all pinned down. I have this line lined up on the fabric that's underneath. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my ruler and my rotary cutter. And without cutting the paper, we've got to be real careful that you don't cut your paper. I'm going to go ahead and cut out this left front section of my jacket from this fabric. So this is the left front section. I've just got it cut out. I'm trying to make sure you can see the whole thing here on the screen. Now I'm going to do the right front section. So now I have flipped the pattern over. I've transferred that line to the back of this pattern because I need to make sure that I line it up on that seam allowance of that piece of fabric. I added a five inch piece of fabric for that four inch addition here. And I'm going to line that up and pin it down and then I will cut out this section. It's real important that you flip the pattern over so that you get the reverse side because you need a left front and a right front. All right, so here is the front two sections or here are the front two sections of my jacket. So I have it cut out and ready to go and you'll see that I have that bottom, let me pull it up here a little bit so you can see that, this bottom section that will be the um, around the waist of my jacket. And my kimono is a much shorter and the sleeves are going to be shorter. Um, but that's how I chose to make it. 
Um, you can obviously uh, make the ear kimono jacket any way you like. But So the front is ready to go. Now I'm going to cut out the back of the jacket on the fold. Let me put that up here so you can see that done. Okay, so now I have the back fabric on the fold. So here it is laying on the fold. And um, hopefully you can see that. That was, there it is on the fold. I've got the bottom sections lined up so that these two strips are lined up. And when I pinned it here, I want to make sure this is in the screen, I pinned it so that this section right here lines up with that fabric piece back there. So I've got it pinned on both sides. This is on the fold, so whenever you have an arrow like this, that means you place this on the fold, which I've done. And I have pinned all the way around. Now I'm going to cut it out, and I'll show you that here in just a minute. All right, so my kimono jacket back has been cut out, as you can see here. There are the arms out here. This is the bottom with this section, and it will go with the front two sections when we put this all together. Let me see if I can get this all laid out here for you. And then I'm going to be sewing these together. And I'm also needing to cut out my lining. So we'll get that lining cut out here as well. And we'll cut the lining in the same way that we cut this uh, fabric section. All right, and now I've got my lining fabric up here on the table, and I've already, it's on the fold, so as you can see, it's folded here, it's on the fold. I have laid my uh, back center piece on the fold of the fabric. Let me pull it into the screen so that you can see that. So I've placed this on the fold and pinned it down. So the back is ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is get my um, front section pinned on here. Let me make sure you can see what I'm doing. All right, so what I want to share with you is how important it is when you're doing the placing the lining on the fabric that you're placing it on grain. And what I'm going to do is measure from this grain line down to the edge of the fabric. And at the beginning, so it's six inches there, and over here, it's six inches. That should match. And as long as that grain line is uh, placed on your fabric so that it's even from the line to the edge on both sides, then your piece is on grain on the fabric itself. And then, of course, this is both the front and the back. And because um, the fabric is is on the fold, we'll automatically, when we cut this, we'll have the left front and the right front section that will be cut out. So let me cut this and I'll be right back. All right, so I have my um, lining cut out. This is my center back and my of my lining and of my fabric. And this is my front and uh, both fronts of my lining and of my fabric. Now what I'm going to be doing is putting the jacket together and then adding the lining. So the first thing I'm going to do here is open out my lining, and this is the center back lining. And this is the neck edge right here, and here are the, the shoulder and arm edges, if you will. And what I'm going to do is pin the shoulder arm edges right sides together of my center and left and center and right pieces. And then I'm going to sew them together on that um, that top edge there. All right, so I have sewn the shoulder of the right side and the left side. I just used about a three-eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now it's time to sew the side seams. And what we'll be doing is sewing up the side and turning at a 90 degree corner here under the arm and then coming out the arm. So I'm going to go, do, go ahead and do that now on both sides. So what I'm going to do at that corner there under the arm is I am going to clip up to that seam allowance, but I'm not going to clip through it. I guess I need a sharper scissors here. So if you'll see that I clipped up to but not through. So there's the 90 degree seam allowance and I've clipped up to it. That just allows there to be some freedom there under that arm. So I'm going to do that on both sides. And then I'm going to sew the fabric of the jacket 
the same way. I'll do the shoulders, I'll do the underarm and the side seams. I will clip it as well and I'll be right back. So I have wrapped the jacket, the fabric of the jacket on the inside of the lining. So it's all tucked together and I pinned all of the edges. This is the front edge, this is the neck edge, all the way around down the other front edge and across the entire bottom. I pinned it and then I basted it. I just used a long basting stitch, a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and I basted the entire outer section because what I'm going to do then is literally add a binding to the entire outer edge, all the raw edges of this jacket, just like you would bind a quilt. So right now I am going to baste the sleeve edges as well. So I have the sleeve tucked in my machine here and I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance and use a long basting stitch and baste that entire sleeve on both of my sleeves. And then I'll be right back and I'll show you how I'm gonna be doing my binding and how I'll be attaching that. So now I have the jacket basted entirely. So the lining is basted, I've turned it right side out and I've basted everything all the way around the bottom edge, the front, up around the neck and I've also basted the sleeves. So now it's ready for binding and I've created my binding. I just used two and a half inch strips that I'm gonna to use to bind the entire outer edge of the jacket as well as the sleeves. So I'll do that and I'll bring back the finished jacket for you to take a look at. So as I baste my, or as I sew my binding to my jacket, I'm starting at the back neck edge and I'm starting on the right side of the jacket. I've got the raw edges of the binding here uh, matching the edge of the uh, jacket itself, the raw edges here. And I'm leaving a tail to finish um, the binding when I get to that point. So I'm gonna go ahead and base this all the way around and I'll come back and meet right up here and finish the edge. So here is the finished jacket. I have just finished binding all of the edges on the sleeves, on the front of the jacket, around the, down the front here, the neckline around the bottom edge. And you could certainly add some snaps to the front. You could add some buttons, whatever you choose to do. But I've got the jacket completely finished. I really like it. It is a shorter kimono, but that's the, the, the style that I prefer to wear. I hope you enjoyed every part of this project from dyeing the muslin with the rust and uh, that was really fun. I enjoyed doing that. And then of course, creating some sort of a disappearing block that you can use to create your fabric to use for the kimono jacket. And um, hopefully you downloaded the pattern for the kimono jacket from the happiestcamper.com website, or maybe you had a pattern of your very own that you preferred to use. I would love to see some of your projects. Don't forget to get in touch with me through my website. Uh, quiltingwithlori.com. I have many fun things planned for 2023. We're going to be scrapping up our stash. I'm going to do some live YouTube videos coming up here soon and we're going to be sewing up our stash as well. I've got a new block of the month that's going to be coming out and uh, my monthly table runner or long pillow project as well. There's just so many fun things that I have planned where you can use up your scrap stash and make some beautiful projects. So stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe and hit like and comment. I love to hear from my viewers. And don't forget to share the videos with your friends and your quilt guilds. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful week and happy quilting.